Hey guys, my name is Jeff Rojas and I'm a professional portrait and fashion photographer based out of New York City. Now, if you're like me, you've ever seen a slight variation between the way that your photos look on the back of your camera compared to what they look like on a computer, then it's time to learn something called color management. Simply put, color management is the process of making sure that the colors of your images stays consistent from the time that you take your photograph until the time you deliver your file, whether that's a physical print or electronically. Now, don't let the name color management intimidate you. It's a lot simpler than it sounds, and it's not terribly difficult to implement into your workflow. Basically, what you're doing is you're analyzing your whole photography workflow. Then you're figuring exactly out where the colors are shifting and making sure that doesn't happen. To make it a little easier to understand, I divided the whole topic of color management into four short videos. An introduction to color management, which is what you're watching now. Color management as it applies in the studio. Color management while you're editing. And color management as it applies to delivering your file, whether that's going to be a physical print or electronically. Now each of those videos is going to ensure that you have consistent color throughout the whole photography process. But before we can jump ahead into managing color, we first need to understand how color works. To the human eye, color is depicted as a combination of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Everything we see as human beings is a combination of these seven colors, and most visual media, like TVs and monitors, display colors as a mixture of red, green, and blue, while most printers print things in cyan, magenta, and yellow. Now, to further complicate things, most monitors and printers are only capable of displaying a fraction of the colors, and sometimes when you print, some of the colors may not translate into certain paper types. Now, those specific ranges and limitations of color combinations being displayed are called color spaces or colored gamuts. So if you've ever heard of sRGB or Adobe RGB, then you're already familiar with two specific color spaces or color gamuts. While there are many different color spaces, these are primarily the two most common color spaces that most photographers are going to find themselves working in. This is a chart of the lab color space. And the lab color space is a representation of what the human eye can see. If we isolate the spectrum of colors that sRGB is made up of, we can see that there's a specific amount of colors that are limited into the spectrum of available colors. Now, when we isolate the colors that Adobe RGB can display, we can see that there's a greater range of colors available compared to that of sRGB, especially in the cyan and green areas of your image. Now, when we convert an image from one color space to another, the editing software that we're using shifts colors to whatever the available color is in the new color spectrum that we're converting to. Basically, whatever's closest, it's going to go ahead and move over. Now, this is especially important to know if you're photographing things like the blue sky or green grass, because things that are available in the Adobe RGB color space may not be available in the sRGB color space, and colors are likely to shift. So what color space should you be working in? You want to base that decision on how you're delivering your file. As a rule of thumb, if you're a photographer who doesn't print their work, stick to sRGB. And if you're a photographer who prints, use Adobe RGB. That's my recommendation. Now, I'll expand on why in a short video regarding photo delivery. And finally, let's just be clear. There's a definitive difference between color management, being color correct, and good color. Color management means that we're going to have consistent color throughout our whole photography process, throughout all the media types. Basically, we're making sure red displays as red, blue displays as blue, and so on. Being color correct means that the colors that you're photographing are true, meaning things like skin tones match exactly what they look like in person. Now, what we define as good color, the subjective, may not translate well to all visual media types. And that, my friends, is a simple introduction to photographing in color. Remember that this series is divided into four short videos to make it a little easier to follow. There's a ton of information surrounding the topic of color management, and we can literally just spend hours talking about color, but my intent was to make this a little shorter, a little sweeter, and to the point so that we can go out and make the most out of working in color. Again, my name is Jeff Rojas, and you're watching Kiss Photo, where we make photography easy. Now, thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed the video and you're watching it on Facebook, 
please share it with your friends. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, have a great day.